Welcome to Really Cool Stuff for the Home podcast, sponsored by HomeWorks. And now with today's show on all the ways to improve your home is your host, Denise Sanchez. Hi, everybody. This is Denise from HomeWorks, Really Cool Stuff for the Home, where we bring you products that we hope can make your homework better for you. And one of my favorite products of all, I sometimes I get customers that will ask me this. They'll ask me, what is your favorite appliance? And it's definitely, definitely the Miele steam oven. This is an oven that is, can do everything. And we're going to be talking to an expert from Miele. He has been with them for over 20 years. He's a really fun guy, very, very knowledgeable. And his name is Jeff Pellucci, National Sales Manager for Miele. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's great to be back. Great. So we're talking about the Miele steam oven, and this is an oven that does so much. So, you know, a lot of our offerings, people want a double oven. And I've got to tell you, my double oven sales are way down because of this incredible steam oven. So you can use this steam oven as an oven, as a broiler, as a steamer, as um, moisture, you know, enhancement, you know, to uh, your oven, and so many more things. But, and it comes in different colors, it comes in different sizes, uh, it comes in different electronics. It's just a fabulous machine. And I've got you, the expert, to tell us all about this incredible product. And seriously, Jeff, it is my favorite appliance. If there was one appliance that I had to have, you know, nothing else, it would be this. It would be this one. It really would be. Yeah. So I can, that. Yeah. can you tell us a little bit about the uh, background about this unique offering by Mila? Well, Mila was actually one of the first in the world of any manufacturer to create and offer for residential sales a combination oven and steamer, let alone just a steamer. Um, it actually started off as just a steamer. Right. It branched mm-hmm. out into combination oven steamer mm-hmm. or combi steamer. And um, the, the, the really interesting thing about it is that when you have the ability to control moisture inside of an oven, you can change the results significantly mm-hmm. from a regular oven. One of the best things about steam is that it's almost impossible to overcook something in steam. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can do it, but, you know, like, for example, if you leave a turkey in the oven for an extra 10 minutes, it's a different turkey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you, if you leave the same turkey in a commie steamer um, for an extra 10 minutes, it has almost no change whatsoever. It may have a little bit more caramelization on the skin, but it's mm-hmm. still a beautifully juicy turkey. Right, so it's very difficult mm-hmm. to ruin something in steam, especially like shrimp. Shrimp is notorious oh, right. for you know people are always saying I never can get it just right, you know, to where it's it's undercooked and now it's not only overcooked but it's like uh, awful, and it's pretty right. hard to do that in, in the steam oven. It really is. It's very hard, and you know, when you have complete control over that steam, you can go from total steam, where say for example you wanted to steam shrimp to maybe just introducing a certain percentage of humidity into an environment where you're making, say, a pie, but you want the crust to be flaky like a bakery. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. You can can do that. It's incredible the range of things Mm -hmm. you can do with a Mm -hmm. steamer. And even things as simple as, you know, like your previous offering where it was just a steam oven. So we would talk about, uh, um, for instance, cooking broccoli. For number one, you have this uh, food-driven menu that you can do along with, you know, your operational selections um, like steam or, or auto roast or convection bake, you know, any of those you can get. But you can take something as simple as broccoli. Put it in the uh, you put it in there. Now you make your selection broccoli, and then it asks you: Is it going to be florets or whole? I say florets. Is it going to be small, medium, or large? Most likely medium. Is it uh, green or is it white broccoli? And then it asks you about how al dente you want it or how done you want it. So you can pick that. But here's the cool thing: So you put in this bright green, beautifully broccoli. You pop it in. It comes out bright green beautiful because it's sealed in the the nutrients it's it's not just steaming it's different can you explain how that uh, boiler uh, behaves yeah believe it or not that has everything to do with the preheat time Mm -hmm. i mean steam itself is very protective uh, of nutrient value 
Uh, it's also very protective of the structure of the food. It tends not to break down. Um, but the color that you were just referring mm-hmm. to um, is enhanced. Even some vitamin contents are, their absorbability is enhanced by uh, being produced by steam. But the key is the preheat. And mm-hmm. one of the things that we do that is so effective in the industry is we preheat with with more volume of steam faster than anyone. And as a result of that, the food does not have time to break down. Mm-hmm. It's simply enveloped in steam so quickly that it's preserved. So the colors are not broken down and made dull or oxidized. Mm-hmm. They are enhanced. So they actually come out more brilliant. And it has everything to do with the preheat. Very fast. And, and also because of this technique, you can do, um, like, um, like say you're doing a uh, potato and you're doing broccoli, and you're doing an apple. So they would obviously come out during different times, and, and, and it's set up to do that, um, but it will not have any cross-transfers of flavors or odors, correct? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. As a matter of fact, um, what you're referring to is a function called menu cooking, mm-hmm. uh, which, is at, which actually takes advantage of the first thing that you were talking about, which is actually called master chef. Mm-hmm. Right, Master Chef is the automatic cooking of whatever food you want it to cook, mm-hmm. the way you you know the way you want it done. Menu cooking is that process times up to three foods. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can take whatever food you want in the menu system and say, I want to eat these three right now. And what it'll do is it will ask you to add the foods at different times, mm-hmm. but they all come out at the same time. That's why it's called menu cooking because you can cook an entire meal automatically without knowing anything about how to do it. And yet everything finishes at the same time, fully automatically. Mm, Beautiful. That's no amazing. flavor crossing, right. nothing like that mm-hmm. at all. And even things like you can throw out your rice cooker. Seriously, it will even tell you when you're going to do rice. It will ask you all these different types of rice that you are wanting to cook. And you pick one. Say you're going to do brown rice. It tells you the ratio of water to the ratio of rice. You pop it in, and it's just like a rice cooker. It, it gives you that good of a result. And... So have you ever have you ever had sticky rice? Yes, Japanese rice. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So sticky rice is short short, short grain, grain mm-hmm. rice. It's it's not that easy to find unless you know where to look for it. Mm-hmm. But I I found a place to buy it. I would buy it in five pound bags, and I would fill up an entire tray with it and cook it in the steamer. Mm-hmm. And it it was so good that I would sit there and eat almost the entire tray of rice. I actually had to stop buying it because I gained. So much weight so quickly mm. that I had to stop because it was the best rice I've ever had in my life. Oh, I know. I, I married a man that is half Japanese, and my mother in law is very, very Japanese. Speaks, you know, English, but kind of broken. And I get my those big bags of rice you're talking about. I get hooked up all the time with those. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, oh, now I've got a connection. Yes. Now you tell me. Oh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes. It's and, But it does a great job of making it. Remember those old commercials, side note, of Uncle Ben's flaky rice, you know, for each yes. one? Man, I think yes. that's the worst yes. rice in the world. <laughs> you know, I like I, it. I know. I actually like the sticky rice. <laughs> yes, me so too. Good. Yes, so yes. If you ever go to a Japanese restaurant or had sushi for everyone out there, that's what we're talking about, that type of rice. The short exactly grain, right. it sticks together. Yep. And it, it does a great job. Anyway, as a side yeah. note, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but and then also too, um, you can take out. Well, first of all, I have a story to tell you. So my mom, she's passed on now. Um, she passed on from ovarian cancer, but she used to be a little freaked out by microwaves, you know. And I'm getting more and more customers that are just like, I don't want to have a microwave, but you know, we really need that. That functionality is pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. But, but say yeah. say you went to let's just pick a a high-end restaurant, Ruth Chris, and you bought a steak and you got it, you had a prepared medium rare, and then you bought their wonderful mashed potatoes, and then you brought oh, uh, their, yeah. their asparagus, okay? So you always go home with a doggy bag, right? At least I do. I go yep. home with a doggy bag. Yep. So yep. the next day, you want to heat it up, or at midnight that night, <laughs> you may want to heat it up, right. and you put it in the right. microwave, and then it doesn't taste like it came from Ruth Chris, but... No. You have. Tell them what you can do in this steam oven, Jeff. <laughs> One of the best functions of a steamer or a combi steamer is the ability to reheat. Um, it, 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 it would eliminate that function in a microwave because um, com- when you steam reheat, it's a lower temperature, lower concentration of steam, 
for a slightly longer period of time. But what it does is it puts the moisture that has escaped from the food in the refrigerator back into mm-hmm. the food. So it's, it's almost the, the, the image that comes to my head is like um, a rose folding and then opening. Mm-hmm. So when you put it in the fridge, it folds. When you, when you put it back in the steamer, it opens again. And what happens is the food tastes just like it was served at the table. Mm-hmm. One of the best demonstrations is, is exactly that, steak. Mm-hmm. But what about asparagus or broccoli with Bernays sauce? Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Right? So that always separates. Mm-hmm. The steam puts it back together. So steam is by far the best way to reheat, and it's also the best way to defrost. Uh, because yes. there's literally zero cooking, mm-hmm. 100% exposure to the steam, and yet the food, like you took a frozen chicken and steam defrosted it, it's not partially cooked. Mm-hmm. It's like you bought a fresh chicken. Right. And and you know what else is, does a great job of reheating? Bread. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It takes a day-old bread and just fluffs it back up, you know, those nice it yeast does. rolls that you get. Oh, yum, yum, yummy. So my mother, she never, she did not have a microwave, so she preheated all of her food that way. And it, it would take a little bit longer than a microwave, not much, but the result was so much better, right? Um, but yeah. also, she would do things like every morning she made Daddy poached eggs. Poached eggs in the steam oh, oven. They are so good oh, and in the steam oven. They perfection. Are so good. She had her own little ramkins that she would put her her egg in, and she would pop it in, and she'd make her her, her poached egg. And then she would get these, you know, fruit of the month clubs type thing. She'd get these pears. She'd love to do this. Get the pear, and there's a fruit function where you can slice, yes. have, or whole, and it will steam the pear. She would take it out, and she would make handmade whipped cream and put that oh, on man. top, and then she would drizzle a little bit of chocolate, and then she would, around the plate, put a little bit of squirrely, you know, chocolate. It looked like a gourmet dish. I mean, and it was so is yummy. That, is, is that even legal? I, I know. And it's so good for you. I mean, there's nothing bad for you. <laughs> Chocolate's good for you. They've proven that. And then, you know, homemade yep, whipped yep. cream, there's nothing nothing wrong with yep. that. And and then nope. the pear, how about that? You know, um, it's just, and it, it yeah, used to be. Yeah, but it's not allowed to taste that good. Oh, it, but it does. It tastes that good. It really does. Oh, my God. So my mother was a, I mean, she could just do anything in that in that uh, steam oven she would she would do lobster and fish and rice i mean she oh, yeah. would it, that was her main cooking appliance is that she used that she loved it so there's yeah, they're fantastic yeah. yes they are and and there is another cool thing that it does which is the rage in the u.s now and people have to go buy these apparatuses in order to get achieve this type of cooking and it's called sous vide and I want you to explain it because this has sous vide built into it. And it also it has another uh, appliance that can go with it to make, uh, you know, everything super, super simple. And Jeff, the stage is yours. Talk all about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, sous vide cooking is, uh, has really taken on a completely new existence here in the United States. It mean, it's a French form of cooking. Um, it means under vacuum. And so basically what you do is you take uh, raw, fresh food, and you seal it in a vacuum sealer, and then you expose it to a very even heat. Now, normally in a in a chef's kitchen, they would they would put it in hot water. Mm-hmm. So you you vacuum seal it and put it in a, a pot of hot water, and the water then would slowly cook the food, and it's completely even, and the food doesn't dry out. It's the, it, I mean, there's you cannot make a steak more juicy than that, okay? and you can't overcook it but either. The, it, it's almost impossible. So with the commie steamer, if you added, say, for example, uh, Mila's chamber sealer, right, it goes mm-hmm. right underneath of the commie steamer. They literally sit on top of each other. Mm-hmm. And you can vacuum seal in the chamber, take the bag out, put it right into the commie steamer, or put it right into the freezer and freeze it. It'll last forever, right, because it's mm-hmm. vacuum sealed. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's even, it's even spectacular for marinating because once you, you put, say, a uh, steak into the bag with marinade, and then you vacuum seal it, it compresses the marinade into the meat, right? So something would normally take 24 hours to marinate will marinate in an hour. And then you put it right in the combi steamer, cook it to 128 degrees, literally 1 mm-hmm. to 828 degrees, and that cooks the entire steak to that temperature. Take it out, unseal the bag, take the steak out, sear it on either sides of a grill or griddle. Mm-hmm. It, it is... It is um, it is the best steak I've ever had in my life. It's actually one of my favorite demonstrations mm-hmm. to do, but it's a great, great way to cook. 
You know, when I was in, invited to Germany one time, and this was in Amsterdam. What is that one city that, uh, not Amsterdam, that they have that beautiful um, Mila? Um, oh, I, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, uh, but you're right. It's yeah. In okay. Well, we had dinner there, and they made duck out of the steam. Now, one of my favorite type of, I love duck, love it. But yeah. it's not often that you get you get it prepared correctly. It's usually overdone, dry, you okay. know, unless you go to a really great Chinese restaurant and get Peking duck or something like that. But they prepared right. a duck and then they took uh, a little hand uh, torch and they torched it, remember, around it. Oh, that was so delicious. And it was a yeah. little pink in the middle, you know, just like, you know, a gourmet um, chef would do. Yeah. It was super. Super, super delicious. And they made a pudding in there as well, or a mousse. It was a mousse that they made in the steam oven yep. as well. That oh, we do that all the time. It is the best mousse in the world. Mm-hmm. See, this is what people don't realize. A lot of times when you talk to them about steam, they simply, all they think about is steaming vegetables. Like on a pan on the, on the uh, full of water. It's a pan full right. of water, right? Exactly. They, right. They, they just don't understand the range of capabilities that you have with something like a combi steamer because, mm-hmm. you know, the ability, there's so many things you can steam, cook, steam to cross, steam or heat, but there are also so many things that you can combination cook. I mean, it, it could, it, it could become your 99% oven in your kitchen. Easily. Right. Mm-hmm. Easy. Easily. Mm-hmm. You can even take a chicken breast like you were talking about. This is how far you can go. You can take that chicken breast that's frozen. You can uh, do a function where you tell it to defrost for how much time. Then you can go to a next function and you can tell it you want it to, uh, to bake for, um, let's say, 20 minutes with 50% moisture. Okay, and then you can tell it that you want to do another seven minutes under the broiler, 75% moisture. Now, I like dark meat. I like because it's just more moist. I will eat. Yeah, I, I agree. I will eat that chicken breast out of that steam oven base like that because yeah. it, it yeah. puts in moisture. You don't. It never is dried out, but you also get that nice crispy skin on it, like we were talking about. It's just amazing. Yeah, what you're talking about is a function called combination mm-hmm. cooking, and the process is called multi-stage cooking, and our combi steamers have up to 10 contiguous stages. And what's really great is that once you get it you know, programmed where you want it to be, like you have each stage exactly where you want it to be, mm-hmm. you can have it memorize that. Exactly. And then all you do is go on, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, favorites, mm-hmm. uh, frozen chicken, and it will go from frozen to serve. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, the best demo I ever did was I cooked 16 chicken breasts <laughs> at one time on one tray, um, and they were all rock-solid frozen. Mm-hmm. And it took 57 minutes, and they were perfectly browned, perfectly cooked, and the juiciest chicken breasts my guests ever had. And they could not believe that you could take a frozen chicken breast and do that to that stage mm-hmm. without turning it, mm-hmm. constantly monitoring it. They were absolutely shocked. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. That, that is an incredible possibility that you can do with cooking. I mean, you know, yep. just think of all the different things that you can do, that one single machine. And then if you just want to use it as a, um, oh, like a toaster oven, you just want to put bread in there and toast it, you know, you could do that. Sure. Or if you just want to do cookies under the convection, you know, you can do something as simple as that. You don't have to have... You don't have to use all the different types of mechanisms that they have no. available. You can just use it like a plain Jane toaster oven, plain Jane oven, um, plain Jane broiler. I mean, it's just the possibilities are endless. Or you're warming. And and let's talk about some of their specialty programs because these are very unique things that you can do with them. Go ahead. I'll let you talk about it. Well, the, the way the combi steamer is set up, um, the – the ability to mix and match anything you want to do, the ability to cook more than one food at one time and have it tell you exactly what to do, the ability to um, mix broiling functions mm-hmm. with different things, mm-hmm. right? Um, especially broiling, for example, with a hot... You mentioned it a second ago. You said chicken. Broil 75% mm-hmm. humidity. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is so difficult to burn something. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you mix that much, you know, humidity with a broiler, and yet you caramelize so well. For example, take what you just said and apply that to ribs. Oh, my gosh. Okay? Yummy. So, 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 for example, you turn on the broiler, and you, you have the ribs 
in there for, say, 12 hours mm-hmm. being bathed in this, this beautiful caramelizing heat but, but softened with this humidity, right? Mm-hmm. You, can lift the, you can lift the bone right out of the rib, mm-hmm. right out of the meat, and it's just, it's just like fork, fork cuttable, mm-hmm. right? So there, there's just nothing you can do. The only, the only thing, and I've had people ask this question, would my combi, would a combi steamer replace my microwave? Um, and my answer to that, my answer to that could is, be. Well, <laughs> it depends on what you use your microwave mm-hmm. for. Yeah. I mean, if you use your microwave for reheating and defrosting, I'd recommend that you stick with, you know, a combi steamer for most of that. Uh-huh. But let's say that you're only zapping coffee. Right. Right. You're gonna. You're not gonna. You're not gonna reheat coffee in a combi. No. Steamer. No. 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 Mm. Right? Or, so usually what happens is people end up getting a smaller microwave with, you know, with right. less fancy features right. because they're just going to use it to quick zap things. Right. And they'll use the combi steamer for everything else. So the three things I've heard is uh, heating up water and then popcorn yep. and then, yep. um, I think that's about it, heating water and popcorn, really. Because some one person said bacon, yep. but you could do bacon in the broiler or in the oven easily. Um, sure. Yeah, sure. so uh, that's it. Popcorn and that. So, but you can get an air popper. Yeah. There's other ways to get popcorn, sure. you know. And you uh, cannot pop popcorn in the steamer. Right. You cannot do that. Exactly. exactly. But some of the yeah. other special no- modes I was alluding to are things like heating a damp towels, decrystallizing oh, sure. honey, um, making I- yogurt, uh, rendering <laughs> fat. Um, let's see. What yeah. else? Are oh, canning. Uh, canning, yeah. Yeah. Um, proofing. Um, what are some of the other ones? There's a lot of specialty. Uh, there's a pizza mode. There's even pizza modes. On there, there, um, there's it, there's so many. But you know one thing that you didn't mention that a lot of people are thrilled about when they discover it: sanitize. Oh yes, yes, okay? yes. And, they, and the thing is, is that when you uh, like, for example, people use it for baby bottles, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. baby nipples, pet toys, mm-hmm, baby toys. Mm-hmm. Um, anything they get that's new, mm-hmm. right? Because when you put that in there on full steam, it doesn't just sanitize, it sterilizes. Mm-hmm. It sterilizes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it goes way farther than any sanitized cycle in the dishwasher. It mm-hmm. goes to sterilize. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can even use it for hygiene crumb, uh, mm-hmm. processes. And then, you know, like decrystallizing honey. I can't tell you back in the days how many bottles of honey that would be about half full, but because I just, you know, it, decry- it crystallized. And you can decrystallize honey. Um, making yogurt, you know, canning. Um, those are just fabulous things that you can do. Something as simple as putting in damp towels, you know, which is very, very European. You know, they like yep. to do that. You know, one of the other things that people really have discovered with steam is the ability to melt cheese. Mm-hmm. You know, like for example, if you put cheese in a microwave, it's going to burn oh, in one. Yeah, spot, yeah. Right? But if you put if you put uh, refrigerated cheese into a steamer, it melts very evenly. It turns out to be this oh this wow beautiful liquid. Uh-huh. You know, so believe it or not, melting things like cheese uh-huh. is, is there's no better way to do it than steam. Even softening it so you can cut it a little bit better. Yeah. just thought of that. Oh, I never butter thought too. about that. Yeah. That's that's a really yeah. really good idea. Really good idea. Yep. So and then and then there's the bread functions again that we have on the the higher end ovens. You get that on the steam oven, so you can pick any numerous functions of different recipes for breads. And then yep. from proofing without opening the door, from proofing to finish, you know you can. Yep. Um, uh, it does a beautiful job, and you get that nice crust, you know, with with that moisture. And it does different types of steam too. So it, I know sometimes it just emits moisture. And then other times, with along with heat, and other times it just uses just steam. So it's like a right. pressure in a, in a boiler, right? Can you kind of well, talk about not, the differences? It's, it's not a, yeah, it's not a pressure steamer. It's a pressureless steamer. But one of the things that's unique about it is that you have uh, control over the concentration of steam in 1% increments. So you can go from 1% steam to 100% steam. And, of course, 100% steam is pure steam, mm-hmm. right? So it looks, it looks like a foggy day in there, except it's moving <laughs> very rapidly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, along those lines, something that we haven't mentioned yet, is, is, but something people really like, is that um, steam is, um, the word I want to use is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. So when you put, let's say, for example, you put um, six eggs in a bowl in there, they will, they will bo- like, instead of having boiled eggs, you have steamed eggs. 
they will they will steam in a fraction of the time of boiling. Right. Plus they peel easier. But what if I put say a hundred eggs in there? Mm-hmm. It actually takes the same amount of time as six. Mm-hmm. Let's say, for example, I did like half ears of corn. Mm-hmm. Right. I could put say one in there, mm-hmm. or I could put thirty in there, and they would take the same amount of time because steam envelops the entire cavity so completely and so rapidly, and in our system it moves so quickly that the steam touches literally everything. So you can use it for a little thing, or you can use it for huge, a lot of things, and you get the same results. And you don't have to turn things... Right, like like a microwave. This This would be really good after the holidays, you know, the next day after, right? Instead of having to reheat the dressing and and the turkey. And I mean, it takes so long when you have large volumes in a microwave, not to mention drying it out. Man, putting it in that steam oven, it would actually be quicker. And it would be like you just sat down at the table on Thanksgiving Day. You know, you get the same result. It doesn't doesn't change the texture. That's the key thing. And I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. When you take those 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 uh, leftovers out of the fridge mm-hmm. and put them in there, it doesn't change the food. The microwaves will change mm-hmm. the food at that point because they're already dried out. The microwaves make that dryness worse. Mm-hmm. But in a steamer, it puts the moisture back. So it it it, it literally is is re it's regenerated. Mm-hmm. The food is regenerated, mm-hmm. and it comes right back to where it was. So mashed potatoes, okay, exactly, are are just spectacular. It's like you just made them. Mm-hmm. And, and here's let's talk about the mechanics so people can kind of appreciate and understand how does the steam take place. Well, there's a couple of different ways. One is mechanical by by uh, there's like a first of all you touch the screen and it opens up. People go ooh ah, it looks very very uh, space age. And then you have yeah. this container that you can fill up with water, and and the steam oven will let you know if you don't have enough water in this in the yeah. container to do the complete yes. job. Then it goes into another container for finishing, you know, the, the uh, spent mm-hmm. water. But there's also yes. the pre-plumb. And I wanted you to, to kind of right. talk about that as well. Yeah, the only difference between the, uh, the plumbed and the non-plumbed version is that the plumb versions have a drain. Mm-hmm. The non-plumb versions have a second carafe that catches the wastewater, okay? A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that if they get the non-plumb version, that they're going to have to fill that carafe a lot and often, and they just no, don't. No. One of the things that's really nice about our system is that the, the steam generation is extremely efficient. So it can create an enormous amount of steam out of, out of a small amount of water. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, most of the time, the stuff people make with steam takes you know, anywhere from 5 to, I'll say, 25 minutes at the most. But if you went, say, something like beets, beets take like 55 minutes. Mm-hmm. You may have to refill it once mm-hmm. at the very, very end, but that's a lot of time to steam. Mm-hmm. Yes. So if you have the plumbed version, you wouldn't have to refill it. You wouldn't have a, you know, a drain mm-hmm. uh, carafe to empty. But the, the results are absolutely identical. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that um, the, the concern about having to empty the wastewater or fill the drain, once you've done it once, it's, no big it's deal. so easy and so uh-huh. quick that it's, not, it's just not an issue that's- at all. That's the version I have is the, the, where you have to empty it out. It's no big deal, not at all. And it's right. super simple right. to clean because when you have steam, hello, all you do is a wipeout, right? So the, everything, yep. it, 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 what is it the term that it uses to de- get rid of the steam? It's, what does it say on the screen? It says, um, uh, what, uh, get, what um, is it? <laughs> I can't believe yeah, that. Yeah. I know. I see it all the time. Anyway, it tells you, lets you know so you don't open up the door and have all the steam in your face. So it lets you know that it's the steam, steam reduction. Evacuated. Yeah, oh, yeah, evacuated. yeah. Okay, so steam anyway. Yeah. So uh-huh. that pulls the steam out so that you don't get a, you don't get a burst of steam. Right, right. You know, and it's, uh, but it is nice to get that facial. It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they become so popular in the U.S. that Mila, once again, looked to us and tried to take care of our needs. So, again, we wanted our steam oven to accommodate the big turkey so what do they do yeah. they made us a steam oven to accommodate the big turkey so you could have this as your primary oven if you're a one oven person this is all you need i mean it does the trick for yeah. everything it, it yeah it'll hold up to a 25 pound bird it's uh 
Good luck it's, getting it's one. The smaller one will hold about a 12-pound bird, uh -huh. and the larger one will hold about a 25-pound bird. Yeah, and good luck trying to get one that size. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I ever saw a 25-pound turkey, I think I would run. Yeah. <laughs> well, guess what, Jeff? We're out of time again. What? Can you believe that? What? I know. And there's still so much more to talk about. There's different colors. That's impossible. I know. There's different. There's black, white. There's gray. There's a stainless. There's a European kind of looking. There's different electronics, so different price points. Pre-plumbed, non-plumbed. Um, there's so many neat things about the steam oven. One of my favorite things I love to sell because we are all about making your homework better for you at homeworkscoolstuff.com. And go to milausa.com and you'll see their steam oven offerings. And go to discover more because you're going to get videos and more information. Don't just pick on the actual units. Pick on that discover more icon so that you get all these neat information. Or come by our store. I'd love to show you my favorite appliance in the world is the Mila steam oven. Thank you, Jeff. And Absolutely. you know I'm going to have you back again. Thank you, Denise. Bye-bye. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs>